it is as we <laughs> uh like an hour before this episode comes up or goes out or whatever uh to inform you that staying right part of this point that the content warnings on storygraph because that's tends to be how we pay attention to content warnings uh are incomplete there's really one important one they wanted me to mention so uh since this is a gruesome horror book uh that is very gross um i thought i'd just like throw in the content warnings um in the beginning for this book uh so the one that stingray wanted me to add was self-harm uh it does come up multiple times so that is the thing there's also cannibalism animal death animal cruelty death of parent child death and racism i'm honestly surprised story Graph also doesn't have mental health um or mental illness on the content warnings but those are the main listed ones on Storygraph. So yeah, uh, proceed with caution because <laughs> uh, this this is a gruesome book. Um, you, you can skip it if you want to, uh, but yeah. I'm glad you called because if you hadn't, I probably would have just closed my eyes and went back to bed. <laughs> That's so funny. You should have just go back to bed. Just no. At least okay. this one will be will a go- fast one. Listen, like, I kind of just wanted to send you pictures of the notes and let you have this one. That's how, that's where Give we're the at. Power. Give me the power. Give me the power. Give Do you miss it? Do you I miss, miss the, power? the power? Phone, why do you not I feel already... conflicted. No, because this is mine. I caused this. I don't even know where the fuck I ever found this book. Like, I don't remember where I heard about this book. That's the I whole thing. I don't know where you heard about it either. I was looking, no, because if you go to Goodreads on Goodreads, it doesn't even have that many ratings or anything. Like, it's not a known book. Like, the obviously. The thing I can think like, of is maybe, like, Instagram or TikTok, but. No, I, I've not, I, I feel like. Either it was probably Instagram if it was Instagram or YouTube. Those are the only two places I've ever. Yeah, it only has six hundred and fourteen reviews, and I imagine it had even less last year. Fucking heathens! People go read this. It's a disgusting fucking book. But go find it. <laughs> uh, we haven't even said what we're talking about yet. Uh, you know what? I think it that whole time. It's two thousand was... ratings, but six hundred reviews. So I don't know. I think mine's a review. Yours is a review. Mine is just a rating. I mean, it almost has four stars. It's like 3.92 or something. I believe in you. Yes, I remember, because I remember when I first read it was around the time when I was more actively trying to post book reviews on Instagram. Um, So there's an actual review on it. I feel like it was better the second time around. I want the spare flannel. I hope you know I've somehow just over the years acquired at least seven flannels. Like they just appear in my fucking closet. So proud. I currently have five. I had three before the sister gave me two. We were just talking about this. And before that, before she gave me two, I had three and she had four. Which means my straight sister had more flannels than I did. Literally, you know what's hanging on my headboard right now? Mm Mm-hmm. A flannel? Yes, but also my Taylor Swift cardigan. Oh, I love that for you. Duality of woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'm keeping all that in as the cold open. <laughs> Fine, just go. I, I, I don't even have... The, the blinds are closed, the light is off, bestie. That's the type of day it is. I believe in you. I, I still I left the fan on, but I'm like, it's quiet enough. No one can hear it. And if they can, too also, bad. The whole entire uh, Desperate Measures episode, there's just birds. So It's ambiance. Also, um, I got up at like 6.30 yesterday. I didn't get up until 12 today, if that tells anybody. Yeah, anything. yeah, I noticed that you weren't I up yet. I was like, I'll play games. Like, I, I was totally read. Too. So, you know. Who needs to read when they have 22 books on their TBR? I want to start another book, but I don't know which one to start. So after this, pick one of the books off my TBR. Thank you. Okay. But I want women, so that narrows down it. That narrows it down just a little bit. Okay. Um. Anyways, this is uh, a fish and flower podcast.
a podcast or we just ramble on for five minutes for the intro. <laughs> Listen, I haven't spoken to you today. I've been rotting in my bed. I... That was a bad choice of words for this book. <laughs> it really is. It really oh, is. It wasn't a good one. It really wasn't. Um, God, Flower, <laughs> okay, so... Rose. <laughs> and, uh, what's my fun fact for the day? I don't know. Bestie, what's my fun fact? <laughs> my fun fact is that I'm in my sister's room because my room is so hot. If if you, the next episode comes out. Have... Because I'm dying. No, it's because I live in the attic. Um, no, the next episode I comes Greenland. out. Yes, the next episode that comes out. Uh, we recorded yesterday, and like I'm dying the whole time. Like I couldn't talk the whole time because I was just melting. Uh, and the sisters' room is much cooler. Uh, and also there's a fan blowing directly on me. It's real nice. Um, so if you hear something in the background, it's her doing things in her room. But like. She can do things. It's her fucking room. I'm just a guest in here. Being nice and cool. Um, okay. Who are you? I don't know. Um, I'm Fish, aka Stingray. And, um, my fun fact is, I'm pretty sure the first time I read this, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that day. And then last night, I was so depressed. I was like, I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then I was like, did I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich the first time I read this shit too? Mm-hmm. And I think I did. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, I definitely remember that. Yeah, there's that for the story of, like, the first time we read it. I read this almost exactly one year after I read it the first time. Because I read it June 8th the first time, and I read it the first this time. What um, day did I read it? Because I read it before you. I want to say, like, the fifth or sixth or something like that. Um, me, but also, me, another fun story about this book, uh, and things that happened in real life in relation to this book, is that this book instantly starts with a scene with No, Luna hold Moss. on, hold on, hold on. There's a scene that starts with Luna Moss. It's fine. It's thing real. I read it on it. the 2nd of June, and I finished it after midnight, because I started it late. I'm sick. Why would you read it at night? Um, because I was depressed and couldn't read it before. It's fine. I was. It's not. I, I had. A, I did too much, and then I saw things, and I would. Then I was depressed, and then, and then I had my peanut butter jelly sandwich. I was like, I gotta do this shit because I have commitments. And I read it, and then I went to bed, and I slept for hours and hours and hours. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, that makes continue. Um, uh, anyways, Blue Moss are a thing in this book, um, uh, and oh, right around the time know. that I read this book, because of you, uh, I was outside, so we were with my sister, um, redoing the, uh, finish on our deck and whatnot, and I think it was, like, the day or two after I read this book, there were Luna Moths, uh, Lunar, Luna, whatever, Moth, on the windows, right there, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, and that's my fun story that has to do with real life and this book. Okay. I have some more thoughts before we get into it. Okay. One, I think it was better the second time around. Same. Because there's like... Even though it was already amazing before. ...hinted at, uh, the stuff with the therapist. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, it's hinted at throughout. And I was like, wait a second, wait a second. All this stuff. Like, her name is Dr. Fawning. She's got doe, is described as having doe eyes. And I was Listen, like, I oh. have so many, I, I highlighted stuff uh, in my Kindle. Uh, it's like an Ashley, a Kindle file. So I got to actually like, you know, yeah. <laughs> instead of a PDF, do what you will with that information. Um, I picked up on a lot more things. And I think I understood it more because I wasn't just like what the fuck is happening i i knew it was gonna happen so i could really like uh absorb the information i was given um also i feel like my mood was in a good mood to, this does not this is gonna sound really bad i feel like my mood was a good mood to read it in again because i kind of like it hit in a different way than it did before does that make sense yes because i listen cannibalism is not relatable Murder is not relatable. Assault is not relatable. But like this, low key relatable. Like, I think it has something. I think it has to do something with um Andy's uh is the type of person to obsess about things, and um so are you. So as long as you're not obsessed about a woman not. and eating her thighs literally, I think we're fine. No, I don't think I want to like 
I don't even want to eat normal animals half the time. I, 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 I human icky. They're I, human icky. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I low-key took notes, and when I say I took notes for this, I mean, I wrote down, uh, on my notes app a list of things that I forgot from the first time that I read it, and it's six things long. Um, so... Six things long for six chapters, uh-huh. It wasn't even meant to be for six end, I want to talk, when we get to the very end, I want to talk to you a little bit about that more, because the tangent she just goes on at the end, like, I understand it, but I don't, so when we get there, I'll be like, help me, Misty. Okay. Um, but I understand what happens, like, I understand what happens throughout the whole thing, it's just her tan, her just tangent at the end. Also, I will be reading a lot of quotes just to set the vibe, I'm turning the light on. Oh, Ow! No, the light is not. No, the light is not. We're, we're gonna open the blinds. I can't. The light, artificial light. Ugh. I don't think we even said what this book is. Oh. oh. I was looking at my, the document that has the intro. I was like, wait a second. Did I even say what book we're reading? We are reading To Be Devoured. I mean, it says it on the title, so it's fine. Um, it also says Pigs Exist. That is an inside joke between Stingray and I that started because of this book. Um... Because when Singer was reading it before I did, uh, and was telling me about it, they just said pigs exist at one point, and now it's just a thing we say to each other. Um, but it's to be devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. I okay, know. I was working uh on Storygraph earlier. Apparently okay, they've written forty two things. Fucking insane. I mean I think they mostly do short things from the few I scrolled through, but like still. Apparently, uh, she she's won some awards for her horror. Um, the yeah. the Brown Stoker one. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready for it? Don 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 snuck. <laughs> Did you appreciate that? Did you appreciate that? I I just made a face and moved off with my life. Wow, wow, you don't, you didn't appreciate my reputation joke, okay, I see how it is. Anyways, um, okay. Oh, no, my puppy being adorable. Why would she you say that when I can't see her? She, she, wait, oh, oh, wait. I'll send it to you. Okay, you send it to me, and then I'll take a screenshot and send it to Sting Ray. <laughs> oh my god. She took a picture of my dog. Pay attention to the dog's head when you see it, because, um, yeah. You want me to start? Go for it. Um, I'm gonna read part of the first chapter just to set the vibe for everybody. Um, <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just reading the first line again after knowing what happens is so crazy. Okay, um... Something is dead over there, hidden among the tall trees separating my property from Mr. Landon. Between our homes rests the football field-sized strip of land, lifeless and brown from the December days. The early hour stretches on outside, morphing periwinkle clouds and buttery tones of the rising sun. They don't stop circling the trees, those poor, ugly, bastardized version of birds. Bird doesn't even seem like the right term. Bird eat, birds eat insects, seeds, and grain. The turkey vultures feast on the marbled strips of the deceased. It's easy to picture their bald, red heads and ivory beaks steering into the bloated body of a cow or whatever else decays in the woods. Luna sleepy mumbles, pull, Luna sleepy mumbles, pull me away from her, the window. Her body slumbers in peace while I place a gentle kiss on a warm cheek before disappearing into the bedroom. Excitement jitters through my chest as I navigate my way into the basement where her surprise waits. That's where I'm stopping. <laughs> Halfway through that, the sister opened up her water bottle, went to take a sip, and then made a face, and I started laughing. So, you know... So now that we have the vibe, um, yeah, the vibe, dude, I forgot the vultures, one, were there the whole time, two, how important and what they hinted at were and all that stuff, and also just, like, her mental processes about the vultures, because, um, 
Yeah, they're yes. kind of important. The vultures are yeah. just a character of their own. Yes. Okay. Um, after this, we learn that um, Andy decided to hatch, um, raise and hatch Luna Moss after seeing them and her neighbor, Mr. Landon's barn. Um, then um, she proceeds to wait for them to die because they have a very short lifespan and then she proceeded to sew them together into a set of wings for her girlfriend Luna because Luna, Luna Moss, we see the connection here. I'm connecting the dots. And then um, she takes them up upstairs out of the basement to Luna as a surprise. She just sets them into her hands. She's like, I have a surprise for you. She's like, hold out your hands, close your eyes. She gives them to Luna. And Luna's like, what the fuck, bestie? Which, reasonable. Reasonable behavior. Because, like, that's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Just, just a tiny bit. Like, if we would have stopped here, I don't think it would have been that weird. But considering everything else that happens, it's very, very weird. You know? Yeah. Like, everyone has, I feel like everyone has that one really fucking weird thing they've done as a person. But if you just have one thing, that can be rationalized a little bit, right? But when you the, when you take in consideration the rest, what happens, well, maybe we cannot rationalize the situation at all. Um, and then I have a quote. How many that quotes I, do you have like, this time? You know, like I quote as then I wrote, I wrote this down into the notebook because you know, well, I like annotated annotated things for this in like in on my Kindle, but also just for me personally. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, my teeth clamp around the insides of my cheeks as if I can gnaw and bleed away the hurt of her refusal. Um, yeah. Okay, so then Andy gets ready to go to her to see her therapist. Andy, I mean, Luna leaves to do some stuff. Leaves an apology, you know, being like, I'm sorry, but it, it was still weird, but like, I'm sorry I react so badly. I know you worked hard on this thing, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, Andy decides to keep the wings because it feels disrespectful to the moss not to keep them. And then we're in. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. Then we are introduced to the new doctor, Doctor Fawning. Um, um, that's my that's my um, commentary on Doctor Fawning. Just <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you know. Here, let me read this part to everybody here. Um. But today I move forward, inhaling the earthy scent of Dr. Fawning's office, as if the, as if dozens of woodsy candles mm -hmm. and wall plug-ins are alive around us. She settles in across the room and stares with an unblinking gaze. Her lashes are thick as a black forest, and her irises are deep brown soil beneath. Silent encouragement settles in the air like a welcoming hug from an old friend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, here's another thing that I have it is. Let me let me just what a strange for I was saying it would be eat away the bad parts for me, eat away my sadness, the sticky, the bitter feelings with their reasons on my body, cloying my will to live some days. Most days. Okay. The rest of her time blurs by, but she listens better than anyone. Maybe even better than Luna. I wonder why. <laughs> also, another thing. My palm strikes hard against my left cheek. Pain and heat, a slight ring on my ears as I dry. Just, I have thoughts about that inevitably. Okay. Um, 
Andy keeps saying vultures, talking about the vultures, you know, you know, you know. Vulture uh, things. We, yeah, then we, I already talked, we already talked about Dr. Fawning. Um, then we learned her last therapist died of cancer. We also learned her whole family's dead. And um, she has a weird conversation when she comes home with her neighbor. Um, and that's the end of chapter one. Mm-hmm. And then chapter two starts with um, the backstory of um, how Andy and Luna met. Uh, essentially, Andy used to work at a bar, and she saved Luna's friend from getting assaulted. And then uh, she gets fired because she quote unquote attacked a patron, which is but, like bullshit. People. But you know. And Luna's was like, oh my god, thank you, blah, 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 and that's how they meet. Um, While wow, Luna is married to a man. Yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, Luna cheats on her husband with Andy, eventually her and her husband get a divorce, and she saves Andy. Um, here's a... Here's a Here's another thing about Dr. Fawning. Quiet. I did most of the talking. Her suit was funny. Funny how? Well, who wears an all tan suit? It looked weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, my fingers curl into a fist as I might be dumping a bruising rhythm against my thigh until Luna's warm hand holds still. I, I have a point with this. Next. Chopper. Um, do we're um we're about to learn. I'm about to explain how her family died. Should I go into detail about that? Should I just read the paragraph? That's what I was gonna do. I mean, I can I can go into detail if you want. A break. I do, I'll do it. I have it right here, Bessie. Oh, okay. Um, I have it in my brain. I'd rather just read it. <laughs> okay. Um, my bro- my little brother died when he was four. You know that part. I say, and she nods. Her lips pulled in a. T- pulled in tight. He climbed out onto the roof and fell onto the cement patio. My father was crushed, guilt-ridden, and crazy. My mom tried to be strong, but the demons in her mind pulverized her, begged her to give up, but she didn't. She survived. For me. I never realized how close my father had been to snapping. He spared me because I was at a sleepover that night with too far away of a target for his temporary but fatal breakdown. Um... He tied up my mom in his old truck with the already cracked windshield, drove them both into, into the freezing, freezing some river that I can't fucking pronounce. <laughs> the police told me she almost survived the water. The drugs in her system didn't subdue her for too long, but somewhere between the crash and the truck, truck sinking, Broken shards of ice from the river poured in through the crushed windshield and pierced her eyes. Yeah. I don't know why they would tell a literal... Tr- I mean, I guess she was a teenager then, but still. Why would they I tell I mean, a- didn't you see the bodies pulled off the river, too? She yeah, was there yeah, them she them. was there when they pulled them out, yeah. Because they didn't find them until days later. I'm sorry. Just the... I'm sorry. Just... Broken shards of ice from the river poured in through the press windshield and pierced her eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then we proceed to learn that Andy got mean and violent after the death because the best. Um, also, this is a little bit later. We get the first mention of 3 a.m. Glower's Red. 3 a.m. Glower's Red numbers from the clock on the high stand. Every time she wakes up, it's 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that this time around. I was like, that's something. I get it, though. Like, if I don't set my alarm, I still wake up at 7 a.m. type thing. Um, she proceeds to have a dream, wakes up at 3 a.m. Um, and that dream leads her to, and I quote, wonder, what does it taste like? Dead flesh. Do the bodies haunt the vultures after they consume the carcass? If I eat a human's meat, do they live on the inside of me forever? Humans eat cooked ham, steak, venison, and more all the time. All those dead cows, chickens, pigs, fish, they become meals. 
Their bodies are adjusting inside of another body, bones and organs, blood and marrow, absorbing and taking what each part needs to survive. It's cooked, preserved, safe. Everything is so safe here, savory and sheltered. And here's the, here, I feel like this, this next paragraph is another thing that really shows us where Andy's head is already at. And we're only on chapter two. What oh, if I oh, have chapter two? Oh no. What if I had saved a part of her skin or brain or liquids before she's buried, buried? Maybe she'd be living inside me, a small part of her, whispering and guiding me through this life. My whole family, they could be here suspended within my body rather than remembered as felt and spread inside my bone castle memories. Maybe I could have kept them forever. Is this what, what the vultures do? These guardians of the underworld, these eaters of flesh and souls, what are these secrets hidden inside their curving vertebrae? The longing to hold on to something dead against my tongue consumes me like a, like a starvation. Not a starvation. Like, I, I understand what you're saying, Bussie, but, like, huh? How do we, how do we, how, where's the pipeline, Bussie? Where is this pipeline? What is the pipeline? Dead parents to cannibals and pipeline? What, what's in the middle of this pipeline, Bussie? Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, can dead flesh hold anger? Mine would. I will be the most excruciatingly bitter of them all, which real. Um, no, at least she recognizes that she has anger issues. Yeah. Uh, she wonders if she should tell Luna about the awakening desires to eat dead flesh, um, but she decides against it. Um, so for now, this is mine, my secret, my need to know and understand the vultures. And here we are, chapter three. How are we doing, bestie? Uh, I'm just thriving, knowing how weird it's gonna get soon. I'm having a good time. I feel like I feel like I'm doing better with this one. Yeah, than I did true. Probably hope this one's start? also like much shorter, so there's like, and, like it's very easy to absorb all the details. Yes. Yes, there's not like um fluff anywhere. It's just like a lot of information all at once, but like all that information is important. Like, we just gotta know that she thinks about vultures and wanted to become a vulture and wanted to fly away and all that stuff all the time. Uh, it starts off with, um, sorry, uh, it starts off with uh, Andy getting a text from Luna being like, what the fuck's going on? Because Andy is isolating herself again. This happened before, me disappearing and ignoring everyone. Most people stopped caring about trying to find me, except for Luna. Uh, once again, reiterating the fact that um, no one really cares about Andy. All she really has is Luna. Like, yes, Mr. Landon is obviously would obviously care about Andy to a point because he's been they've been neighbors Andy's entire life. But other than that, it would not extend to like a friendly thing, you know. It would just be concerned because that's your neighbor, you know? Mm. Um, then we get to the chicken. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have a lot highlighted on this page. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read. Condensation drips from the still warm lid. And the liquid reminds you of Dr. Fawning's dewy eyes today when she said my love for Luna is more obsession than real love. <laughs> the plastic lid crunches from my hands, twisting it up. Uh, contact, she bought a rotisserie chicken at the store and she's about to just eat it with her bare hands, which apparently that's what people do. I don't know. I wouldn't know. I don't like rotisserie, rotisserie chicken. If I was obsessed with Luna, I would have... Ignore her all week with the intention of protecting her. I'd be creeping outside of her apartment with a camera, watching her through the windows or some perverted shit, sending her dead moth wings in the mail. I have to giggle. Dr. Fawning said, I will figure that out in time, but I don't understand what she means. I don't dislike the doctor necessarily, but she's so quiet and abstract with her whispers and stares. I need guide. I, I need guidance to feel the empty ache in my body. Otherwise, I am forever starving for help. I'm sure to how to ask for it. Um. Uh. 
It smells good, but something is missing, referring to the chicken. Um, now I'm going to read about how she eats the chicken for everyone to enjoy. I pick off a strip of tinder chicken breast. I'm eating with the vultures. This chicken, my roadkill. My eyes close. The chicken grows a head and feathers. Coyotes come to tear the body open. Instead of a lips, the mouth morphs into a beak, and I gnaw along its carcass. Normal things. This is how, what normal people think when they eat chicken. Yes, um, obviously. How different would it really taste as something raw and untouched? Disgust never works its way into my re- reactions, only curiosity. Carrion has to be repulsive and inedible to a human. Otherwise, why would our ancestors have built fires to roast their fresh kills? But how do I know these things for sure? If Dr. Fawning won't give me the guidance, I seek to live a life free from the torment inside my vicious thoughts, then maybe the vultures will. I... Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just... Mm-hmm. And then we have the we have the line in which the title of the novella comes from, which I highlighted that in yellow because obviously I using different colors, but only this line and like two other things have yellow. Why was that important? I don't know. Um, and the quote is, "Our deaths deserve no more." No, I messed it up. Our deaths deserve no other meaning meaning than to be devoured. I love that for you. I'm laughing because uh, the sister is like, I'm being quiet. Being while my mom's in the kitchen making as much noise as possible. Of course she is. She's her mother. Like, I know. Listen, she's already talk- heard me talk about Alien Dick for this podcast, so. I have a weird noise. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's also Demon Dick with tentacles. I heard a weird noise. Is there a vulture in my house? I just took this episode. Don't make me spit it out all over my computer. No, like, seriously, I'm kind of paranoid. <laughs> I'm going to I love that for you. Well, you'll be paranoid. I'm going to mention that the descriptions in this book are spectacular. Like, every time something gross happens, I'm literally just crawling in my skin, just wanting to gag because just like, oh. Just like, the description of, like, the chicken's condensation in the packaging. Alone. Okay, I feel the same way, but also I'm just like, that's so, like, it's like, disgust, but also, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever read. Does that make sense? Yes. But I feel like I just like horror and gross things more than you do. You know, maybe. I think that's where my fascination comes from. I think it was just Abby moving around. She's in the living room. A baby? Yes, I saw her. I, I turned my flashlight on to her. There's not a light on there. I just looked at her. She looked at me, and I looked at her. And she looked at me, and I looked at her. You know, he looked at me, and I looked at her. Yeah. She looked at me, and I looked at her. I looked at her, and I looked at her. I don't know what that audio was. I just, I just seen it in this one video with Walter, the Walter dog, and this one fish, and it, you know, normal thing. Um. Here's more things about her eating the chicken. When my eyes close, I am standing next to them. My body hunched down with rippling black and brown feathers shining in the sun as I stretch the muscles and tendons of my new wings. I join the vultures in their wake, magnificent figures circling a dead beast, as if in ritual for what is a big place. I take gnaw at the meat around the bone from the rotisserie chicken. This isn't enough. is isn't raw enough. Even if I went to a restaurant and ordered a bloody steak, it wouldn't be right. We'd still cook it into safety because, again, everything is so safe here, preserved and burnt. I could purchase raw meat at the grocery store, but it wouldn't be the same. I need to know what the vultures know. And they sure as hell aren't walking in this room and tearing out plastic bags of packaged blanks and tenderloins. <laughs> Normal thing. Even when I tried to explain the cravings to Dr. Fawning, she stared back with those big eyes and remained quiet. What exactly am I paying the something for again? Good question. See, like, it's just, the writing is just so good. Like, the question simmers in my brain, thrilling rage like volcanic vial through my chest. Wrath 
weights and this purgatory of hunger and anger. The really bad kind that consumes me whole blacks out portions of my day. Oh my god, why did reading that aloud make me realize something? Should I should I mention the thing? Sure. What it made me realize. Okay, we don't learn until like chapter five or six that Andy's been blacking out. Yes. Even though we were just told right there that she's blacked out before. Mm -hmm. Oh my lord! (laughs) Also, I didn't highlight this, but like, the only thing Dr. Fonning did say earlier was some bullshit metaphor about how raw meat representing rep, representing a desire for sex and blah 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 heard it all before what do you mean heard it all before messy what does that mean i mean she does go well maybe i said it to myself but something like that or something yeah i think she does like briefly after saying she's heard yeah it or maybe i told myself this i don't remember i'm just so fucking hungry okay messy yeah uh she decides to go for a walk to get out of her head a little bit which that seems backwards to me personally. Mm. And then she sees her neighbor, Mr. Landon, and um, he's got a pregnant pig. In, yeah, he's bringing in a little piggy, piggy pig pig. That was um, uh, disowned by its owners, I guess, because she got pregnant. Yeah. And then they're like, we can't take care of this pig. So he took the pig um, and she's about to pop and all this stuff. Yes. And. Mr. Landon is like, well, if they didn't want her to be pregnant, they should have kept her away from the males, which, yeah, tell him. Tell him, Mr. Landon. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Andy um, fantasizes about cutting the pig open to get to the babies. No, thanks. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I read a highlight and it was kind of. Okay. Um, she calls Luna. Luna comes over. And he just wants to have sex. Luna's like, no. Yep. No, period sex is not cool. It's kind of weird, kind of gross, which I don't know. They have sex. <laughs> Which. Did Luna really want to? I don't know. Oh, she seemed like she was into it. And like, she wanted to. Until Andy started getting weird. With like, literally eating up her period blood. I'm sorry sister, you had to hear me hear that statement. <laughs> you should make her listen to this episode. <laughs> I did tell her parts of what happens in this book, and she just gave me this face like, oh. Yeah, um, the next thing I wrote down was, Andy licks her fingers. I would like you to know that in the book it says, clots and all. Yeah. <laughs> um, understandably, Luna, not a big fan of this. Yeah. Uh, she freaks out, goes into the bathroom, cleans up, gets dressed, and leaves. Um, and she's like, I can't believe you, all this stuff. But yeah, what uh, did she, she leave in her f- bathroom? No, hold on, we'll get there. Huh? She literally says, what the fuck, Andy? She jumps off the bed and grabs her pants on the door from the floor. The bathroom door slams shut as I stay, stay kneeling in the bed. As the sticky mess of my fingers and the ache in my gut and on my tongue, all here with me. Present ghost asks me, yeah, what the fuck am I doing? Also asking, oh, God, why did you stop? Why did you let her go? Um, bestie? Um, Luna Louise tells Andy to get her shit sorted out, which, yes. Valid. Um, um, then I highlighted this part here. The hunger worsens, but my heart is racing. I lick a little little more at my knuckles, and for one fucked up second, I imagine Luna dead and slayed open, her body and meat all still tender for me to taste and touch and to have as my own as I circle above her, hissing at the other vultures because she is mine and mine alone. Okay, Messi. Oh my god, I 
Her body, a shiny earthen beacon with the forest foliage spreading beneath her like the lion wings of the Luna Moth, like her eyeshadow and emerald rings. I could consume her and keep her in me forever. Um, or you could be normal, like, I don't know. I, I just imagine. Um, but yeah, then Andy washes her hands. And then when she goes oh, to wait. dry her Hold hands. Hold on. <gasps> My palm... <laughs> you just want to get over this. I, I can tell. My palm laps hard against my cheek, slapping the image from my head. Stop, you idiot. Stop. And here's why I wrote, why isn't there a self-harm trigger warning for this? Yes, there's like a suicide and suicidal ideations in the trigger warnings. But that's different from self-harm. And Andy is obviously self-harming throughout this whole thing. Mm. So I'm confused. Yeah, she waxed her head multiple times. She did the shower, too, at some point. Yeah. Here she's hitting, she's slapping herself multiple times. Um, When she was trying to talk about her family, she was like punching her leg. But Luna's like, hey, no, don't do that. <laughs> and then she slapped herself on the car ride home from seeing Dr. Fawning one time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, chapter five or six, um, she bangs her head on the shower wall until it just, like, stops, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, why is there not a self-harm? I don't know. That's, my, that's a question. Um, <laughs> anyway, Andy washes her hands. Yes, uh, Andy Watson. I'm sorry. That's a lot different than sucking up someone's mental blood like a goddamn perverted vampire. I'd laugh if she didn't sound so disgusted because it is kind of funny. <laughs> you just heard that a context. Um. Once again, amazing writing. Please don't go, I whisper. A deep, swirling ache of sad- sadness and famine battle together inside my stomach. Maybe I shall let her go, but I'm greedy and, and obscene and I don't want her to leave. It's fine. <laughs> um, then he washes her hand. I'm just gonna read the whole thing. The whole... I can do the Cliff Notes version. No, I'm, I'm gonna read it to give everyone the full experience. Water drips down and bounces off the plastic bag in the bin. A bolt of roller toll paper rests in the bottom next to a lone string of floss. Saliva fills my mouth as I hunch down and thrust my head into the trash. What the fuck was that? It sounded like glass crunching. What the fuck? Okay, sorry. Is someone breaking into your house? No, the back door is open. Why would they have to break in? I don't know, because they're dumb. No, it sounded like a way. Like, let me, we're doing something weird. He's an old man. What do old men do all day when he's out there in their garages? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hold on, let me look at my window. What the fuck is happening here? I don't know. Meanwhile, Kindle's telling me uh, that I should get House of Roots and Ruin. Shut the fuck up. You already have the co- Courtney Cool. Don't fucking speak to me. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna ignore it. If I get murdered, well, this would be an opportune episode. Uh, I'll make sure to clip it. And, um, I don't yeah! have access to the Instagram account, but uh, <laughs> I'll um, it somehow. <laughs> I'll send you the password. Don't worry, Misty. Okay. Um. So I have fills my mouth as I hunch down and thrust my hand into the trash. I feel like hunch down was a good word to pick because, like, vultures, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, God. My words whisper to, to an empty space. A hard lump stands behind my tongue. The toilet paper wad and rolls in my hand like unwrapping a present. A secret gift from Luna. Here we go, everybody. Her bloody tampon sticks to the paper, but it's still damp and warm from its time inside her wonderful body. My hands shake as I hold the cotton up to my nose and in, and inhale. Heat spreads low in my abdomen, and I squirm from my seat on the closed toilet lid. One hand beneath the stretchy band of my leggings, gliding into the wet warmth between my legs. 
The other hand holds the tampon to my lips, and my tongue darts out to taste what Luna left behind. That's the end of chapter three! Good times, good times. What's worse? Uh, you having to speak about alien and tentacle dicks? Or you having to hear me say those words? You know? That's a really good question, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. We're on chapter four. Halfway there. Halfway there. Whoa. Living on a prayer. Okay. Uh, we're two different people because I thought of the Big Time Rush song. Makes sense. There's a dog on the floor. Can I see her? Yeah. Look at your Instagram. Okay, I did. The, the picture's not working because Instagram won't doesn't love me. Um, that's okay. I'll send one on Snapchat too. Andy wakes up from a nightmare. Um, wonders if um, Andy wakes up from the nightmare. Luna called her, but she ignores it. She doesn't call her back, etc. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Andy wakes up from a nightmare. Luna called her. Andy ignores it. And then Andy proceeds to wonder if the pig had its babies. Um, so she goes to Mr. Landon's barn. Uh huh. This is the one scene that I vividly remembered. And she sees the pig has given birth. Mm hmm. She, she takes a pig. To steal a pig. Um. She was trying to keep it quiet because obviously the mother started like freaking out, et cetera, et cetera. And then Mr. Lane came out. She was trying to keep the piglet quiet because the piglet is obviously freaking out. And then when she's like half in the woods between their houses, uh, she accidentally kills it because she's trying to keep it quiet. And then she <laughs> eats it. Bones and all. Bones and all. Bones and all. Masha so, yeah. she's a vulture. It's the time. Pigs, pigs exist. Pigs exist. Um, and then she goes home. And I think that's when she takes the shower and she bangs her head on the wall. No. <laughs> oh, it's a different time? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Luna wakes her up the next morning and confronts her about not, um, because she's like, Mr. Lane said you're not going to your appointments. You're just like, parking it in the woods close to his property and like roaming the woods for a few hours um yeah you sounded pretty sane to me andy stopped she grabs at my wrist he said you've been parking your car in the woods along the pool off of his property like you're trying to hide it and then he said you walk off into the trees every monday morning for hours and why would i do that i do my best to keep my tone even but there it is rippling inside me bitterness wrath the rolling rage of, of it threatening to overpower and spill out my throat. Or maybe it's the dead pig rooting in my intestines. I have not been walking to the fucking woods. I have been seeing Dr. Fawney. Now get out of my way before I puke on you. Ah, uh, the proceeds to, um... Throw up the pig. Yeah. Uh, I said Andy throws up for obvious reasons. Um... Oh, this line, um, obviously, and, uh, Luna's like, are those bones? What the fuck, bestie? Um, oh, these two lines. I peer closer and swear I see even tinier clipped down teeth. My stomach burbles, but all I hear are the squeals of the baby piglet. Yeah, good times. Yeah, her her excuse to Luna uh, when she asks is that it's just the bones of the chicken. She didn't even notice when she was eating it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more things. Um, and then Luna puts her into the shower and washes her up after she's done being sick for like a good while. Oh, here's a line. Uh, but also, um, yeah, <laughs> Luna is 
So what the fuck's this whole thing? Um, is this a lesson? The vultures. They have to be teaching me something from this. They have have to be. Here here's here's a here's a good thing here's a thing about um her and Luna's relationship. She wants to tell me how she really feels, but she's scared. I can see that. I used to know everything about her movements, her quirks, her kinks, every twitch of her expressive face. All those gestures and micro expressions were my poetry every day. My Bible I read from her. The only one I could ever pray to and trust. And I have smashed all our love down to it. Unrepairable into unrepayable pieces. My girl with my time span and I school is sorry constellations. What have I done to you? I had pushed everything good away because of the seat needed me to understand the vultures, to build my wings and earn a freedom of my own. I could never be anything more than a copy of them, but I still want it because it feels like mine. Uh, they argue more. And then they, um... Yeah. They argue more about her going to see Dr. Fawning. I have been. My legs wobble when I stand up. I fucking have been. Every Monday morning, I get in my car, I drive on the road, I go see Dr. Fawning, and that woman, she just stares at me. She listens, I think, but she doesn't talk. She stares at me with those big, dark eyes and her sandy hair, and those goddamn tan-colored suits look like some sad animal skin. It's always the same. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I really want to watch you. Um, the molten pain of pure hurt simmers in her eyes. And the last thing I really want her to do is leave. But somewhere in this argument, I have begun to wonder more about how her dead body would taste. Normal things, normal things. Yes. Uh, and then Luna just says this thing. You're a virus. You have all this rot inside you and you fill up on it until you pollute everyone around you. Then you wonder why you're alone at the end of the day with your fucking sadness and dead boss. Maybe Malik was right about you. Mm, yeah, did we bring up what Malik said? Uh, maybe her family's dead because they couldn't fucking stand her. Luna. You ever yeah. think of that? Yeah. That's a great thing to say about your ex-wife's girlfriend. I mean, I I feel like he has some right to be upset because Luna did cheat on him with Andy. Yes. <laughs> but, like, that's, like, granted, he was drunk also, but, like, and it was, that was, like, a long time ago when it that happened, like, when they, when that everything started, first went down and stuff, but, like, still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I assume Luna leaves after that. Yes. Um. There's this other part. Um, I wanted to jog with you, Lena, but not beneath you, not away from you. And then she turns to leave. An unseen mass weight, mass weight, weighs within my chest, and maybe that is the virus, the rot she mentioned. My own poison decaying my body from the inside out. All the anger bile's soaring, souring the nectar, my heart and soul. The way death follows me, the way hostility rests inside me like a bomb coming to take comfort before detonating. Maybe the worst part of it, all of this is how much I like it. The way the fury fills me up. The sweet satisfaction of satisfaction of being a pissed off bitch to everyone and not giving a single fuck anymore. If only I could curse them all, turn them into piglets, and flip them open for the trophy vultures, my brethren, to enjoy. Mm. I have turned myself into a soured up muck of a mess fighting my own inclination toward the wrath my mother always knew I would succumb to but I would try, try, try again to teach my body to properly digest and use to carry on to sustain itself my vision missed into red blurs and my stomach complaints demanding me to carry my hunger for the real this time demanding I keep down my kill I will understand the bitter, bitter animals who have marked me out as one of their own. I have to understand because with Luna out the door, there is nothing left. Oh. Chapter five. 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 
I'm gonna go see pictures of a Bella dog first. It's a Bella dog. I love me a Bella dog. Thank you. You're welcome. She is a Bella, and she is also a dog. I would hope so. I don't know. The sister said she's a cat. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> she does really act dog. like a cat sometimes. Now you sending me fucking posts. I don't know what you're talking about. Dead flesh. Raw dead flesh, whatever. Okay, are we ready for chapter five? Sure. Here we are again. In the middle of the night, I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted Neon red numbers play across the smooth clock face on the nightstand. Strange running tones from my dream transition to the living world. It's 3 a.m. And Mr. Landon's saying glows on my cell phone screen. Why is he calling at 3 a.m.? Yeah, that's a little weird. Okay. I don't know. I don't, what if it's not actually 3 a.m., though? That's the thing to me. Maybe. I don't know. Because he seems like a man who will keep a normal schedule. He is kind of. He has a little farm going on. Um... Yeah, she wakes up at 3 a.m. from a call from Mr. Landon. I don't know why I just call him his name. Like, I don't, I feel like you can't call him anything but Mr. Landon. Like, you can't just say the name for that. No, that's Mr. Landon. Like, don't ask me why. Um, and he has dry blood on her hands. Mm. Doesn't know where it's from, where it's Doesn't coming she from. also have mud on her feet? Um, I think the first think. time this happens, she has mud on her feet as well. I don't know. Um, and then there's feathers in her bed. She's apparently been collecting feathers this whole time, like, uh, the... Uh, um, the feathers of the vultures that they draw, she's been collecting them. Um, dried blood flakes off my free hand, but I can't find any open wounds. Yeah. Nothing, there are no cuts or scrapes on my skin. Um, so Mr. Landon's asking about Luna. He's like, he's like, is everything, are y'all good? Is everything okay? I don't feel like it is. I feel like, straight away, everyone's like, what the fuck did you do to Luna? Which, um, yeah. Yeah. Two bent black feathers are stuck to the dry blood. Vulture feathers? I've been collecting feathers on the porch for a while now, in an old wicker basket, but I don't remember going to look for more last night. And this, we just learned this information, but she's apparently been doing it for a while. Mm. We love an unreliable narrator, bestie! Okay. I love the people yeah. know. I mean, Andy, Mara Dyer, um, those are only two I can think of off the top of my head, and guess what? They're both fucking murderers! I'm okay in my head! You know, I can't say anything, because I also like both those ones, so... And you didn't make you let, um, we're both fine. She Remember left hours that ago. time that I pulled Mara Dyer out of the TBR jar, and then I put it back? Shut the fuck up. We're both fine. She left hours ago. Then why is your car still at your house? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Jesus, old man, none of your fucking business. She's fine. Is she? Is she, Are Andy? you sure about that? There's a long pause in my chest tightens with an uncomfortable, warbling sensation. Luna's fine, I insist. She better be. He hangs up and my heart plummets. Did I hurt Luna? <laughs> I, I'm going to take a break here and inform you that I just look over and my sister's scrolling through Goodreads and I just see your update for the Wicked Bargain from like two days ago. You know, I found that very funny. Okay, continue. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Luna's cherry red car is indeed so far from the driveway. Um, my mind can't make sense of the people still life is. Is this, why, oh my god, 
my brain just stopped existence in my yard. But I know I would never hurt her. I love her. The blood on my hands. And here she tries to convince herself that she's from another pig, but it's fine. It's not from Luna. It's fine. I think we're already, but it's fine. I'm fine. I think it's fine. I just collect fucking vulture feathers and sew wings for moss for my girlfriend. It's fine. I'm fine. I didn't murder my fucking girlfriend. No. I mean, I can appreciate that in the like. Okay, here we go. Here's what we were talking about. You were talking about the shower door rattled as I bang my head over and over again across the hard plastic. Rattle, bang, rattle, bang, until all the bad memories are gone. Gurgle. My stomach joins in on the rhythm, and we all play our bodily instruments. <gasps> that made me realize something. Um, until we all play our bodily instruments, until the overwhelming weight in my head stops pressing down. Whatever is burbling in my gut, it stays down this time. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, ooh, what did she eat? What did she eat? In a way, it was a moth. Let's shut the fuck up. Um, you know, some people do say eating bugs is the future, so. Stop. And he's just ahead of the... The... the, the Norm, it's not fine. Everything is fine. Uh, I assume the house is insured because she's trying to figure out if she did something or not, and not that she destroyed the house while things were happening, right? Right. Okay. She calls and texts Luna, and, you know, she's like, yeah, I'll call her friends, I'll call Malik soon just in case to check hey big break can you stop making weird ass noises and scaring me <laughs> um she calls Luna one more time and Luna doesn't answer um and then she tries to go to bed um After my third and final frantic voice melts her, I fall back into bed, wishing the panic song my heart keeps hammering out will fade away. And it does, but only to be replaced by the clink of wind chimes echoing in my head. The same sweet melody of Luna's laugh. Dread fills me then, quick and cold, like someone unlatched my jaw and shoved the hose deep into my throat. A drowning sense of utter loss floods my entire being. I am lost beneath the water, searching and fading, finding nothing. Normal. Uh, Luna has been missing for three days. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's talking to Dr. Fawning. She stares, doesn't blink. Her tan colored suit is splotched with black patches of something. I wonder what that something is, huh? And no, I haven't called anyone. Definitely not Malik. I think she's okay. She has to be. Uh huh. So. Oh my god. Okay. The witty scent of the office barely covers up the stench of rotten garbage. We learn that Andy is like missing time. Dr. Fodding tells me to see more, but there are hazy gaps a few moments where I rest and wake. The cool hardwood floor chilling my bare feet stays in my head, like I've been sleepwalking and can almost remember it. Almost. The teeth grinding frustration are not being able to reel in, and almost memory makes me want to scream. I feel like I'm going crazy. Sometimes I wake up with more feathers stuck in my skin, more dried blood on me, but just a little, never as much as that first night. What is the source? I keep hoping it's me, my own blood, but I find no open wounds. This morning, I woke up with an empty syringe by my pillow. I don't know where it came from or what was inside of it. Now, where did it come from? I still don't understand that part, respectfully. I mean, I know I the point of it, but, like, I don't know how she got it. It's not very hard to get syringes, Bestie. Okay, yeah, but, like, I don't know how she got what was in the syringe. 
I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what was in the syringe! <laughs> I think it was something that knocks a person out? I don't know this thing. Um, I didn't tell Dr. Fine in this part yet. Did I take something? I never... Hold on. I never did illegal drugs. Sure, bestie. Surprising giving my inclination towards obsession, towards addicting myself to other vices, towards a sick hunger I cannot satisfy, but I'm so desperate to, still so desperate to understand the vultures. I want to trust myself to believe I am falling asleep and not blacking out while my body continues to conduct its movements and that is a night without my, without my entire cognizance. I tell Dr. Fawning this too, and she stares back with those large, glassy eyes. She whispers to me then, makes me ask myself, what am I re really capable of? What is she capable of, you know? The question refuses to leave my head now that Luna is gone. Every time I get closer to understanding the vultures, I lose a piece of myself along the way. Um, and we have this lovely song or poem I think she made up. I don't know where it came from. And somewhere in the darkness is my Luna, Luna, burning bright in the forest of the night. <sighs> you know, um... And then we have another 3 a.m. reference. On the third night of her disappearance, the wind chimes play a ballad. Sweet, mel 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 melodic laughter. The gentle clanking of her glass music echoes through the woods and entices, entices me like a siren song. They are a secret calling on to me on this dark morning. It's nearly 3 a.m. and I have come to hate this hour, but at least I'm awake, aware. With saffron and horror waits, harbored in the darkness of the woods where the vultures circle. The burning darkness of the night is playing your song, Luna. Are you inviting me to sing along? I try to ignore it, but the wind turns grow angrier. They haunt me with screaming refrains until I sit up in the bed and scream along with them. Part of me knows it's in my head, but their song sounds so real. I have to go into the woods and find out what sings to me there. Is it Luna? Does she laugh from finding her way home or cry because she is lost? There is rage in her melody of dancing shards, rage that echoes from the fierce shaking of the trees as a winter wind howls across the fields. It's all imaginary in my head. It's not real, Andy. My psychiatrist repeats over and over in her tan and white suits. Not the suits. The good doctor reminds me of a key deer. Something small and rare, found in only in one area, something endangered. Mm-hmm. You could even make the noises go away, Andy. You're a smart girl with a whole life ahead of you, but you have to stop this obsession. Obsession means Luna. You're a smart girl means you're off your, guy, you're off your damn rocker, Andy. She says my name too much, and I say it back to myself. I wonder if she wants to be something else, something hysterical. I'm, I can't. Like, this is so... I'm biased against my own sex. But if I don't talk to her, she has no idea how much worse things could become. I love Luna like a good habit. But my obsession remains directed towards the hunger of the carry-on. I need to understand the vultures as they guide me into the underworld. I'm a body run to consume other bodies. There is no wrong body chair when all the meat is dead and just food. I can never explain this to Dr. Fawning and probably never to Luna. There is something there, and I can between violent songs of laughs and with Luna's disappearance. I'm sorry. And it's not a projection or a manifestation as my ab, ab, or ab, 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 fucking hell. I can't speak. It's fine. Um. Anyways, um. So Malik calls her, um, because he's obviously looking for Luna. Mr. Landon called him apparently, and then, you know. <sighs> obviously, and he's like whatever it's fucking fine i don't want to speak to you and it hangs up on him okay um she breaks into the barn because 
Mr. Landon keeps it locked now for obvious reasons. Um, should I mention that there is hair wrapped around the bottle opener, but like it seems too fresh and too shiny. Just saying. Um, she breaks into the barn. She grabs an axe off the wall because he has like sharp things just hanging up as you do i don't fucking know and she's like i should kill these pigs she's like just swinging the axe around like i'm gonna kill these pigs and then mr Lannon shows up with his shotgun and is like what the fuck are you doing in my barn what the fuck did you do to luna and she's like you know you know and then she pretends to put the axe down does she kick the axe back up into her hands? Is that what happens? I don't... I don't... No. I didn't fully understand that. I, I think she just kicks it for no reason. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, essentially, she acts like she's going to surrender. She picks the axe back up and um, right in his shoulder. And then proceeds to take off his head. But also, um, blood sprays me in the face when I look at it. A glorious, glorious scarlet fountain just for me. I swing again and hey, batter, batter. I'm sorry. Makes me laugh every single time I can. <laughs> like, I, I uh, just stopped myself from laughing last night when I read that. It's kind of funny, okay, just, <sighs> and so she kills Mr. Landon and dismembers him, uh, taking okay. bits from the vultures, taking bits for herself, and leaving bits for the pigs, and that's the end of chapter five. Good times. Okay. Oh, also, what I, what I, what I, went into the kitchen to put my soda can on the counter. Uh, we, our calendar is puppy photos, right? Uh, and so it was switched to the June for obvious reasons. And, um, it's the cutest little puppy ever. This one a little bow tie. I also have a calendar. I like puppies. Yeah, I know. Okay, how could he get? Sometimes I'm like, am I really a dog person? And then I'll look up a picture of just a random puppy and I start crying. So, you know. Special things. Okay, here we go, bestie. Chapter six. The final stretch. Malik shows up looking for Luna for obvious reasons. Malik, Malik, Malik. And then he notices the wicker basket. Apparently it was Luna's, but she gave it to Andy. And he pulls out the vulture wings. And we learn that the vulture wings have been sewn together with Luna's hair. Normal things. Yes. Um, uh, Andy decides she has to go see Dr. Fawning right now. Um, like right fucking now. So she gets in her car. Yeah. And then Matt gets into the car with her. I still don't understand why. Um, and he's all like, what are you doing? Um, and all this stuff. Uh, and she's like, I'm going to see my doctor. Like, I, I, she, I think she has, like, some glimpse of a memory or something of doing something to Luna or having a fight with Luna. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. she's all like, oh, shit, what did I do? I got to go see my doctor so she can help me out. Um, help me remember. And he just gets in the car with her. I don't, I don't understand why. Yeah, um, I'm going to ignore the glimpses for now until the very end, and then I'll explain fully what happens. Um, I have to see her. Dr. Fawning with her big doe eyes and her silly suits. I have to talk to her. Not her big doe eyes. Mm-hmm. Malik's life is up in the past. Like, he's still talking. Words go in, but they don't process. I am one track minded. I am in need. I need to finish the wings and sew them onto my back and fly away from all this. Fly into the sky and circle with my kettle of vultures. Normal things. 
I'm flying down the driveway and a man is talking to me from the passenger seat, but I have to get to the office to crawl through the undergrowth of her hidden space and find Dr. Fawning. Make her tell me what is happening. Make her talk out loud or not just in my fucking head. Mm-hmm. And then we learn we learn some things right here. Um my nighttime cocktail, the wine I wasn't supposed to drink, and the soul and meds and rub with robotessin. All my sleep aids fuse into a Molotov bomb inside me. These things I've tried so hard to stay away from. And what was in the syringe, Andy? I don't know. But the corkscrew was so cold and slick, resting against my palm. It was sparkly, like it had been recently washed when I found it before breaking in Mr. Layton's barn. Before, I curled my hand hard around it. And what I finally had around it. Oh, my Lord. Before, I curled my hand hard around it, and when I finally had her down, when she ran to the wood and screamed at my sanctuary, I drove the pork screw deep into Luna's thighs, untapping her blood and letting it pull into my mouth. Mm. Yeah, that imagery was interesting. Her sweet red wine on mine. She refused to give it to me, so I took it on my own. She kicked and fought and bruised my ribs with her foot. But she didn't understand how powerful the meat was. I had to taste her normal things. Mm-hmm. It's normal to just want to use I don't tap know. your girlfriend's blood like a bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah. How do I make them understand this? How do I make them understand what it's like to live with this hungry beast so deep inside your soul? I don't, I don't think you can. Yeah. I did not count on there being an even greater beast sweating inside, simmering me alive. I am the daughter of Wrath, and to Wrath I shall return. Especially, who just writes that? Who just writes that? It's like, eh. like, I just, why is it so fucking good? Why is it better the second time around? Like, it just keeps getting better and better. Hey, did you know someone posted their wrap-up? Was it, was it, was it me? Yeah, it was you. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. I saw that, like, yeah. halfway through this recording. I don't know why I didn't get a notification. I have my notifications turned on for you. Fucking YouTube. Okay. Um, I don't remember Luna's, I don't want to remember Luna's screams when I gashed open her thighs of a corkscrew slashed through her hair, ripped it away in savage tusk as she was knocked down. The way the syringe slid so, into her so easily. I'm not going to read the rest of that. Um, um, no, she's not dead yet and she's mine. And I cannot share her with you. I know I promise, but I love her too much to share. That's her thinking to the vultures. Maybe because is what Dr. Fawning meant by my obsession. The metal honey of her blood, such as a, such a delicacy in my mouth curling around my tongue. I used the corkscrew to saw the tiniest morsels of flesh. It was sheerer than the piglet and bloodier, but it was Luna. And I knew I craved her whole body soon. I needed her to die slowly, beautifully. Um... I have to talk to Dr. Fawning. How to fix this? I arrive at her office and put the crime park before switching off the engine. What are you doing? The man says. I turn to the man and wonder why he's in my car. I have to talk to my doctor. She's waiting. She's on the mat. I don't have an appointment today, but I think she will still hear me out because it's urgent. Maybe the air fresheners are gone because a rank and sour odor parades my senses heavier than before. Dr. Fawning, I call. She's a singular presence here. No other staff or secretaries. Ever. Only only the doctor has big eyes and tan suits. Yeah. Um, sh- I say, and I stare down on him, remembering his name. Malik, this is a private session. Please wait outside. We are outside. What the fuck is this? <laughs> and then, uh... And he starts speaking to Dr. Fawning. I think I hurt Luna. I just wanted to understand the vultures. They've been following me. They want me to become a part of their way. 
were we meant to be together, I tried to bring them Luna, but I didn't want to share her, so I brought them to the Mr. Landon instead. They liked him. I think once I finish my wings, I can go home with them. Dr. Fauna is quiet, but she watches me. And then Mouth calls the cop for obvious reasons. Dr. Fawning and I, hold on. Yeah, Dr. Fawning and I continue to stare at one another. She whispers to me and I nod. Her, her ears are gone and her nose is shriveled and brown like a rotting mushroom. Uh, the cops are in fact coming. Um, Dr. Fawning, I don't want to go to jail. All I ever wanted is freedom. People want to take my life from me. And then Malik is continuing to be like, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck are you doing? And then we receive this lovely information. He shakes his head, his mouth open in dumb confusion. I'm not talking to a dead deer in the middle of the woods. Look at it. Why is it suspended from a tree? Who hangs up their kill in the woods and leaves it there to rot? He turns to me now. Luna said you weren't going to your sessions. Is this what you've been doing? Uh, so we learn that um, Dr. Fawning is in fact a dead deer in the woods. Mm-hmm. Casual thing. I remember the first time I read that and I read it and I saw that and I just had to sit there for a moment. For a moment. My jaw was on the fucking ground. I didn't know what was going on. There was so much happening. I was so overwhelmed, but, you know, casual things. Casual things. Didn't you give it five stars this time? I gave it four stars the first time and four and a half this time. Okay. Because there are some little things that I was like, I don't understand. Like, I don't fully understand the syringe. I, I have a theory. Um, Why did Malik get in her car? I don't fucking know. Um... And then the ending is a li- feels a little rushed to me, uh, but otherwise, yeah, it was much better the second time around, especially since, like, knowing what happens and the hinting at the deer being the therapist is, um, yeah, the way she literally describes her as having doe eyes, and I wonder why. And Pam colored suits and yeah. never speaks, you know? The haze fades from her eyes and I start to go through in front of me. She shifts in and out of focus, we being the woman in a tan suit and a white undershirt and a big dead doe hanging from her hind legs off a sturdy branch. I try to work to do in my head. My doctor Fawny stops one whispering and inside her mic gets and flies. Remember from the dressel bed deep inside her slash belly. Yeah. She realizes that it's, and she finally sees what it is. Um, we started to hear moaning <laughs> in the past few, I don't know, however long. And then she crawls over to behind Dr. Fawning because she realizes that she buried Luna in like leaves and dirt and mud with Dr. Fawning. Uh, Luna is alive and well. Um, and then Andy proceeds to uncover her. Um, Luna tries to fight back a little bit, but then um, Andy flips her over and starts sewing her Luna moth wings onto Luna. Until uh, Luna hits her in the head with a rock, and then um, she yanks the needle out from the uh, thread and stuff, and then proceeds to stab Andy through the cheek. I got lonely, so I started to watch your wrap up. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to let you know I'm. I have to go to the fucking doctor, like the normal doctor, for the first time. So I was like. 1415? What the hell is this shit? On my 20th fucking birthday. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Want me to kidnap yeah. you? Well, I kind of do really need to go to the doctor, but yes. Yeah, I need a mood. <laughs> um, where was but I? But I get oh, the um, needle. 
I was talking about uh, how the Tristic Venom episode comes out the Friday after this episode comes out, which I forgot to bring up this fact uh, in that episode that I brought up after we recorded the previous episode to this one, which is the Desperate Measures one, which is the fact that that one goes up on the 9th, which means the date for it is 6-9. As in 69. Yes. Yay. Yes, we are. Yes, yes, yes. I forgot to bring that up. Um, That's the next episode. And then next week, uh, Monday is Her Body and Other Parties. And next Friday is the next book in the Katie Robert era, which is uh, Learn My Lesson, which is a thruple. Um, I'm intrigued what's going to happen for the thruple, because I remember in the movie, like, technically Hades is his uncle. Because he's Zeus's son, so. I assume they won't be related. Hot take. Um. But yes, that, that's. That's all the things. You got anything else to say? No. <laughs> I love that. Uh, we have an Instagram. We have a YouTube. We have other things. They're all in the description. Um, I was going to make an obsession joke about people becoming obsessed with me, but don't actually become obsessed with me. I can't afford the stress of having a stalker. Got enough stress on my own. Honestly, same. Um, my hair is finally dry. It'll be worse if you had a stalker, though, because you live in the middle of nowhere. I know. 